Hi, you are watching this uh, Tropical Outlook video here for Saturday, July 27, 2024. And before I go much further into uh, the video here today, I want to stress that the development chances of uh, the tropical disturbance that we're going to be talking about today, which is this right over here, um, is quite low. We're looking at a 30% chance of development of this within the next seven days and i will say it though that this is a disturbance that does need to be watched over the next several days or so so that's what we are going to start here with this video today and what i'm going to be watching here and i'm going to show you the uh imagery here let me see if we have it quick yeah here we go this is what i want to see we're watching this um this area right over here. And what I'm going to be watching is the interaction between that area right here. And that is located over the central tropical Atlantic. It's near 44 West Longitude. And there's a couple of tropical waves like right over here as well. Um, that's located near 39 West Longitude. And this other one right here. Um, and probably this one that I'm going to be watching. And the complex interaction between these tropical features, uh, they may help to cause this disturbance to develop because what's going to happen is this disturbance, it, it's going to head west northwest so let me try to draw that again it's gonna head west northwest as uh we go in during the next week or so now environmental conditions over the central and eastern tropical atlantic they're not very favorable for development and the reason why and let me just zoom this out here folks is let me see if we can get it i don't know my zoom is not yep here we go is that you got this uh, interaction of dry air that is uh, present from the Eastern Caribbean uh, right through much of the central and Eastern tropical Atlantic. And this dry air is likely what's uh, capping any sort of development. And this says to me that development over the next few days is probably going to be limited. So, what we're going to look at here, we're going to look at the forecast models. And um, I'm going to start it off here with the GFS. So the GFS model, um, what I'm looking at when it comes to the GFS, and we will get into this system here. And you can see what happens here. This is our system right here with all of that rain. And this is going to go into, I'm actually going to go into next Friday. And I apologies on that. So, um, going into next Friday, and you could see that it's um, let me just say at first, um, it did forecast development of this disturb of this disturbance. Now. Let's go into last night and um, let's go into the, the overnight runs. Okay, so overnight runs. Look what it does. It, it forecasted this um, for the Gulf of Mexico as a hurricane coming in right into Alabama. Look at the the 12Z run. It's not forecasting anything. It's dropped from that. And there seems to be two reasons why it has dropped development. So let me get to number one. Number one is that the GFS now forecasts this disturbance across all of the islands of the Greater Antilles, which leads to little being left of the system. So it could mean land interaction, 
more than likely. It interacts with land. If it does interact with Hispaniola, then that's game, set, match. And the second is that the GFS model, it has this bias in play of showing the entire favorable background state getting uh, struck over the Eastern Pacific. And you can see that right over here. Um, you can see something developing over here. And... As well, so that's that's another thing, another indicator. But when it comes, let me see if we do have ocean water forecast in here. Unlike we have with, uh, we probably don't have it with these models. But I might as well kind of um, tell you with the GFS model that the GFS model. Their ocean water forecast temperatures is running almost one degree Fahrenheit too cold across the central and eastern tropical Atlantic. And this might also be the reason why the forecast has been so hesitant to uh, forecast development. So what does this all mean at the end of the day? Um, it means that I think we need to view the GFS model with at least some skepticism for a while. Now, let's get to the Canadian model, because the Canadian, and I'll show you that. The difference between the GFS and the Canadian is that the Canadian now, and you can see, this is our weather system right over here. Uh, it does forecast this disturbance to develop over the Northwestern Caribbean in about one week. So... Going in, and then it forecasts the system to become a northern Gulf Coast sweat threat. So let's go around um, Monday of next week. So Monday of next week, it has this. This is what the GFS had, by the way. If you did see that. It, it's showing the GFS run from last night. Now the European model... Let's get to the almighty European. The almighty European here. And um, let's forecast this. So the European model. And I will say this has been the most consistent. When it comes to forecasting this. Um, so let's get to late next week. So late next week. This thing is in the Bahamas. Right. So this is our system. Uh, I'll just point that to you right over here. The system is right over here. You can't see it because of the red. I might have to change the color here. Um, you see this? Th that's our system right there. And it's really been pretty consistent. Now, was it? Sh what is the difference between the GFS and the Canadian and the European? Well, I'm going to tell you that right now. Look what the European is doing. So this is Saturday. It's our tropical storm right over here. Look, pay attention here. And I usually don't go this deep, people. It's developing an East Coast threat. Now, that's what the Euro is doing. When it comes to um, the ensembles, and I got this off of Mike's uh, weather page on Facebook. Follow him. Uh, shout out to him, by the way. Uh, the GFS ensembles, very quiet for the next two weeks. And there's a couple of members that actually do show um, some sort of development. Now, the European, and this is from the weather models, by the way, uh, the European ensemble model guidance, um, it's very active. And it has a lot of members forecasting a storm traveling from near the Bahamas next Saturday up the east coast of the United States between August 5th and the 7th. So you look at this, all of this biasness right here. That's what it's doing. This would be the cone of uncertainty um, if I had to do it. Like the cone would be from here all the way up into here. Uh, that's how I would do my cone of uncertainty for this. And it should be noted that 
There's also a couple of members right here as well. Two members that are showing um, an eastern and northeastern Gulf Coast threat as well. So what are my thoughts on all of this after looking at all of the veritables here? Um, I do think that we probably will not see development from this tropical disturbance um, throughout the rest of this weekend right into the um, first and possibly middle parts of next week. Beyond this, we have to keep an eye on for tropical development from this disturbance. Um, once it reaches the area from the northwestern Caribbean to the Bahamas. So around Friday and Saturday of next week, that's the time frame that we have to watch. And the reason why I think about this is because that there is going to be an upward motion pause in the Julian uh, Madden-Julian oscillation system. And that's going to be pushing its way into the Western Atlantic. Now, at the same time this is happening, it appears that the ocean water temperatures, that is going to be favorable for development. And when you look at wind shear values, that is going to be favorable for development. So my guess is that there's definitely a chance that we will see tropical development from this disturbance in about a week from now. Before then, though, extremely low that we're going to see chances for development. And it's way too soon to, to go in and give guesses on where this system may go, go, even if it does develop. But the reason why I say this is because exactly where it develops and the upper level winds at that time, at this point... I would say people that live in the northern Gulf Coast, eastward to, towards the Florida Panhandle, and even the southeastern um, coast of the United States should definitely keep very close eyes on this. Um, I want to say it's way too soon for um, the Mid-Atlantic and up the east coast right up into the northeast, up into New England, up in my neck of the woods. Um, too too early to really determine that. But you never know. Because these um, model guidances, they do change. And we saw that with Burl. So if this continues going more to the west... Like what we saw with Burl. Because remember, Burl at first, they had it in Mexico. And then what happened? It went in, it went east. So it could be a possibility that with this um, this Bermuda High right here, that it is going to push um, here as well. So um, likely... We will uh, see what happens with this in the coming, well, next week or so. And the next video that I'm going to be doing on this will be on Monday. So check me out on Monday yet again. Uh, until then, I am out, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and weekend if you do watch my weather content. So long for now. Bye-bye.